YouTube people, how y'all is? And I am back with another episode of For My Culture. And as you can see, I'm reviewing Robert Glassberg's 2019 album release, F Your Feelings. Excuse me, it's F Your Feelings. Now, Robert Glassberg is a big prominent name in the music industry, specifically the funk and jazz arena of the music industry. He's been around for a very long time and has actually produced a lot of your favorite artists' tracks and a lot of your favorite artists' albums, as a matter of fact. This is my first time actually diving into a Robert Glassberg project, and I felt like this was the perfect like start for me, even though I've known about Robert Glassberg, because like I said, he's been on everybody's work in the past. He's just like Terrace Martin, or he's just like Kate Trinata. He's He's been around, and he's been in the back producing a lot of your favorite like tracks. This is the first Robert Glassberg project that I've actually listened to myself as a whole, like from start to finish and i was very impressed and this is why i feel like i should have been listening to his albums a lot more sooner the very first track the intro track it was a posse cut and it was featuring this comedian i don't know his name but this comedian who was just letting it out there what the title and what the theme of i don't know the project was gonna display throughout this but he was basically repeating F your feelings, F your feelings to the various artists that was featured on the project. And I guess that was the that was supposed to be the comedic relief part of the project. And it was it was pretty weird to hear that at the start of an album. I've heard weirder intros, but this was just a little bit too much. And the length of the track kind of made it just a little bit too much but eventually there was some dudes that was dropping some lines and some bars, even though they kept, you know, stopping because it was just like they're freestyling off the dome. But that was pretty creative and I liked the organ beat that was happening in the background. That was pretty, that was pretty, pretty, pretty good. And overall, I thought that track was a pretty good intro into what I was about to dive into. So then the very next track, these changes, or excuse me, the changes, this changes everything, sorry. This track right here really made me anticipate that this was gonna be a very, very creative body of work. I love this track. I love the instrumentation. This reminded me of pure Robert Glassberg. And of course it was Terrace Martin also behind the scenes that was producing this track. And he definitely made it like, it's, that sounded soulful. Like I really enjoy that. And the real, my favorite part about this track was I love it when you have the bass guitarist that always drops in and out with the same phrase. He'll build upon that phrase later on by freestyling or just you know off the dome adding chords and stuff. And I like the way it came back in at certain times he'll drop out, but then he'll come back in with that same phrase. That is by far my favorite aspect when it comes to uh, jazz bands or like any instrument, instrumentation oriented bands. That's my favorite part. I love it when you start doing some freestyling and it eventually turns out into a good solid jam. And then the next track, Gone, featuring YBN Corday. This was a more symphonic um, track. It definitely put the energy down from This Changes Everything, but it wasn't like down or depressing. It's just, you know, it was just a more symphonic, more monotone track. And YBN Corday, he delivered his verse. Um, I'm not really the biggest YBN Corday fan because it seems like sometimes his lyrics are a little bit elementary. His content is going for what he tries to talk about. He'll try to dive into some more in introspective content, but his lyrics sometimes doesn't hold up the, it doesn't hold the ground for it. But overall, the track was still nice. It was a nice uh, tie-in from This Changes Everything. And then the next track, Let Me In, Let Me In featuring Mick Jenkins. Um, the thing I love about this track was Mick Jenkins was actually dropping some quality bars and some lines that actually made me think. And I can say the same about all the artists that was featured on this project. They was dropping some nice verses. Um, Mick Jenkins had the line where he was saying, uh, real niggas multiply, no, real niggas multiply and fake niggas reproduce a lot, something like that. And I was like, okay, that's that's pretty that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. I can't really understand the full meaning. Well, I can't remember the full meaning of that lyric. Uh, I, I, it, it spoke volumes to me. I also like the line he was talking about at, near the end of his verse when he was like something about, we don't even really wish our brethren be safe. It was something around that line. Don't quote me on it. I'm paraphrasing. But I like that because it's like, yeah, you can tell our 
you can tell like our fellow kin, hey, be safe out here, but we never really know what happens when you go out there. That spoke volumes to me and that really made me like, wow, that was, that was a pretty good bar. And that overall, that track was pretty good. Now, the thing I didn't like about this track was the fact that Mick Jenkins was in part of the track. And then the rest of the three minutes that was left over was just the instrumental playing with, of course, little uh, bars of freestyling happening. But I don't know. I think the track could have cut off a, like at least 30 seconds after Mick Jenkins verse, because I don't think we needed to just keep playing on that instrumentation as good as it was we didn't need to keep playing on that because that eventually kind of let the it kind of let the momentum down but it still wasn't bad it just let the momentum down and then you move on to the next track in case you forgot which is just a complete instrumental by Robert Glasper I will say that the instrumental cuts on this project was not my favorite parts of the uh, album but I still enjoyed it because it was aesthetically pleasing to hear. It was like mood music. It was music that you can just play in the background and you're keeping yourself busy. So I did, en I did enjoy that. So I can say that between In Case You Forgot, Indulging in Such, those those two tracks right there, those two cuts, it was it was pretty enjoyable to just to hear. And then the next track, uh, F Your Feelings, the title track. This cut was what brought me back in after those two instrumentals. This was when we had another feature and the feature was Yiba. She was featured on the Lucky Day Project and I really, really loved her feature the most out of that body of work. And the same here, her feature is good and I heard her on something else. Yiba has been producing some solid features and I'm really gonna check out her body of work because her vocal ability is nice. It is nice. She really can hold her own on, that, on those tracks. Another thing I can say about this project is I love the fact that Robert actually cared about the transitions when going from cut to cut. You know, usually with uh, rap albums or any type of albums where you don't really have an artist that cares that much about every single quantity or quality aspect about their work, Robert doesn't is not that type of person. He actually cares about every tiny piece of the body of work that he's producing. And I can tell with these transitions because the transition from F Your Feelings to Endangered Black Women, I didn't even know that the track changed. It sounded like it was really a breakdown or part two of that track. Um, the vocalist, Andre Day, I think she gave me complete Erica Badu vibes on 100. And I actually wanna say that her vocals sounded exactly like Erica Badu. That track was very introspective and it was needed. And I like how it was the type of track where it can fit with anything that's going on in social relevance today. Like this album in total, it could really be played today like it was just a new work in 2021. This is where we were starting to get into the more featured tracks and the more featured cuts. Expectations featuring Baby Rose and Rhapsody. Rhapsody, of course, was gonna deliver a thought-provoking a thought provoking verse, and of course she did. Um, the thing that got me about this track was I love the feature on the hook. Baby Rose, her voice sounded very unique. It kind of gave me... A few moments later... I got Layla Hathaway vibes coming from her vocal lines because it seemed like, you know how Layla Hathaway, she does this thing with her vocals where she'll like, I don't know, it's some weird stuff. But Baby Rose, her voice was just that unique and I really love that about that track. All I do featuring Sir Bridget Kelly and Songbird, Singbird or whatever, that track is very soothing and it tied in perfectly from expectations. Like I said, the transitions were lovely and flawless too real effortless and perfectly it was a per perfect smooth transitions perfect all i do with sir sir carried and stole this track because this was the first time that sir has actually impressed me with a vibe song his soul production that he does on his own is cool but i don't know there was something different about this there was just something a little bit different about this after that track, that's when we went back into the instrumental part of the album. And of course, I'm pretty sure it was done by Robert. Uh, I Want You, it was a cool track. I didn't really care for it that much because I felt like it dragged just a little bit. And then the next track, Trade In Bars, yo, featuring Herbie Hancock. And the next one, DFA Fallout, I don't know what that means whatsoever. I don't think that should have been on here because it was really just a... 40 second, one minute and 30 seconds. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Those tracks, like I said, it was 
it was cool because it fit the vibe of the environment that you're put in. Like if you're doing something and those tracks are playing, it's just perfect background music. But when I was actually listening to this and especially from the hype coming from those featured tracks, I don't know, it kind of just let down the momentum just a little bit. And that's one thing I can say about this entire body of work. The length time of this album was around an hour and 11 minutes, I want to say. Yet, it didn't feel like that whatsoever. It didn't feel like that at all. But I can see where it would start to get draggish with those instrumentals. Sunshine was one of the few instrumentals on this entire project that I actually enjoyed, like really enjoyed. Like I treated, I treated it with the same excitement that I had with those tracks that had featured artists. I wish he would have traded Trade In Bars Yo and I Want You and DFA Fallout with Sunshine and maybe that track could have been spread out longer because I really love the instrumental on that track. Liquid Swords, this track was genius. This track was genius only because I love the fact that Robert played with just an organ and a pianist and of course the drummer in the back, which by the way, shout out to the drummer on this body of work because he slash she, I don't know who, showed out on those polyrhythms. Oh my gosh. Liquid Swords, yeah, this track right here, it was genius because I love the trade in the organ phrase that was being played all the way back from, I wanna say the intro track. I mean the very first uh, track, the very first cut of the album. I love the fact that he took that melody and he took that phrase and he repeated it and he kept having it on repeat during that track while I'm sure this was Robert on the piano just letting it rip and you know, just really showing his musical capabilities on piano. That was dope, that was dope. I find that stuff pretty cool. It was more than just me listening to it. I actually find that stuff pretty creative. And then DFA FTF, I'm assuming that this was the shout out track cause it was really just whoever that was in the vocals. It was really just whoever that was, just naming dudes that was, I think I heard them say Mac Miller, RIP, Miss You Bro. It was really just like a, it was a playful track. It was, it was just, you know, saying stuff, just, it was mixtape vibes, just saying stuff. Trill featuring Yasin Bey, AKA Most Deaf. I'm not calling that man Yasin Bey. Um, this track was not good to me. And the only reason I don't think it was good was because Yasin Bey's, his lyrics I'm pretty sure was straight. Um, uh, kind of, a few stuff kind of went over my head. You know, I didn't actually have enough care to go back and be like, oh, I wonder what he's really talking about. I didn't like how after most Def had his verse, it seemed like the track just continued to live and it continued to sprout and it just played and played and played and played. That track in total was seven minutes. I didn't need seven minutes of that instrumental that I actually didn't like that much over a like two minute, not even two minute Yasin Bey verse. I don't know. I didn't like it. And then him kept saying Trill, the name of the track. Trill, with the little reverb on his voice. I didn't care for it, I didn't care for it. But then the album ended perfectly with uh, another top tier instrumental, Cold. And I love the soothing, warm summer feels that came from that track. It wasn't cold. <laughs> But yeah, overall, overall, this album was a perfect introduction for me when it comes to listening to Robert Glassberg albums. Uh, even though he treated this one like a mixtape, and he even said that he was going for a more freeform buildup, jazz freeform idea and conclusion with this project. Now, certain things worked and just a small amount of stuff didn't work. But yeah, man, overall, shout out to Robert Glasberg. Great body of work. It did drop in 2019. Yes, I'm reviewing it in 2021. It's my channel. I can do what I want. Yeah, dog. Like, comment, subscribe for my culture. Let me know your thoughts on this project in the comment section. And yeah, more content on the way. I'm out. Peace.